We made it happen. Jimmy was an incredible success. I don't know where he is. I gotta find him. Gosh, I don't. Oh, oh, oh. Oh yeah, George, George, oh, George, right George. Here. Yeah. Hey, we did it, brother. We, yes, we hey, did. Thanks to this, you know what? And in the ring with Dan and Chris Denny, hey, brother, man, hey, he's about the most cat. I just love him to death. I love you. Thanks for having me. Hey, you're the best. I'm telling you, brother. In the ring with Dan and Benny. Yeah, we love you. Thank Woo, you so much, Dan. Oh yeah. <laughs> Hello, friends, and welcome to another edition of Dan and Benny in the Ring. I'm Dan Spashano, joined, as always, by the original Long Island Ice to be himself, Benny Scala. Benny, I see you got your uh, canine companion with you again. How are you doing today? This is Miss Bree. Uh, yeah, Dan, what a great weekend for our football teams. Your team, uh, the Washington Redskins, I'm not even going to say commanders, uh, <laughs> picked up a really nice win on the road against the Falcons. And uh, this week they go to New York to play the shitty Giants. And my team, the New York Jets, uh, picked up a huge win against the Philadelphia Eagles. They have a bye next week, and then they return to play the same shitty Giants. And both teams with their uh, with their victories this week, they got themselves right back into the playoff chase. Yeah, absolutely. And I give I give uh, your boy credit since he was uh, last seen hanging out with uh, hanging out with Mama Kelsey. He's had quite a run in his career. So, yeah, I heard about that. Good for him. And I was surprised. I know you, I, I say Redskins, Redskins too. I was surprised. That they said that that was the first time since high school that Atlanta's starting quarterback had lost a home game, he undefeated in college up and the pros up to that point. Wow. Okay. Well, but uh, everything. <laughs> but as as we've seen with baseball, football, and so much else, Benny, you and I can can get sidetracked way too easily. So we got to get back to the wrestling aspect. We got a great show planned. Really, kind of a unique story to tell today. Benny, why don't you tell everybody who the uh, third face joining us this evening is? Absolutely, and actually his team won as well. So I've had I've had the pleasure to meet this gentleman and see him wrestle at Boogie's Wrestling Camp. He's a three decade veteran of the Mat Wars, which means he'll have uh, plenty of great stories for us. And it's my pleasure to welcome the king of crypto, Mr. Donald J. Bitton. Mr. Bitton, welcome to Dan and Benny in the Ring. Hey, great to be here. Thanks for having me. And your team's the Cleveland Browns, just for the record. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. Uh, sorry, the I, I dropped the lead on that. The Browns taking down the 49ers. No, no, you taking down the undefeated Eagles. So, uh, you know. Big wins. Mm hmm. And not a not a good weekend to be a heavily favored undefeated team. Right. Correct. But uh, Don, thanks for thanks for coming. Uh, I know we got a lot of fun stuff to talk about. We go, I want to get started. I know every week we say it, it's the same question. We start with everybody because the answers are always different, unique and fun. We love hearing them. So I'll start the obvious answer with you. When did the wrestling bug bite you? Do you remember when it was you first became a fan of wrestling? Uh, it, it, it was in uh, high school, uh, I was managing, uh, the, the basketball teams and stuff like that. And one of the other managers, two of them actually were really into wrestling. And so I started, you know, watching them getting into, this was, uh, WCW is what I was really into. Uh, it was like 98 ish. 97 ish so you know right right when it was all on fire it was like it was so good right then uh and that's when it really caught on that it was just a fun way to tell stories even though i didn't know it yet i didn't even look at it that way yet that's just what drew me in was the the showmanship of it all so um you grew up in was it akron Don, did you say Akron, correct. I was born okay. in the same hospital as LeBron James and Steph Curry. Wow. Although and I like to claim the, the former and not the latter. <laughs> <laughs> so you got involved right in the middle of the uh, the Monday Night Wars. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, that was, I was a junior in high school and I, and I wasn't really into it growing up. And then those, those guys, they were just so passionate about just having fun and, and, and not, uh, you know, that was a chance to like 
escape reality. And so that's what it became for me to l- watch and see all these crazy things going on back and forth on TV. You, you know, it's funny. We've had several guests, Benny, where they're right at that sweet spot age group where they got into wrestling peak Monday Night Wars, maybe mid mid to late 90s. And I, I always it's funny to think like, you know, watch the NWO the er- or the early, early days of WCW right before the NWO and then go back just a year or two and watch the Dungeon of Doom and RoboCop coming out to save Sting. And I really outside of maybe one or two of the territories <laughs> under a new ownership, I've never in my life it hit, it seen a bigger ch- like 180 degree turn in company, the way companies are presented than that that two year period between the, the end of the corny days and the start of WCW's added their own version of the attitude era. It's, it's crazy stuff. Absolutely. So Don, when, when did you decide that this was something that you might want to do as, you know, as a vocation? So it, it, I never, ever, ever thought that I was going to be doing this for 21 years ever. Like, when I when I, I went to Virginia Tech, uh, didn't work out so well. Uh, I, I just I was just in the the largest classes on campus and and everything, so it just wasn't that style of learning wasn't for me. So uh, I moved back to Roanoke and I had gotten a job at uh, at the mall and met for the first time a uh, former boogie graduate and. I, I can't even tell you all the accolades he's won, but uh, Gregory Brissetti, uh, he's trainer up there at Boogies. And uh, first day I was working at at the store in uh, in the mall, and I, I walk onto the sales floor, and nobody was coming in, and so he looks over and he says, "So who's into wrestling?" And I was like, "All right, so." Uh, they had this, this backyard federation and it was not the typical, you know, hit you with everything we can find. It wasn't the just violence for violence sake. We had about a dozen guys or so, give or take, and we had 50 characters. Like it was all about characters and storytelling and all that kind of stuff. And of course, we, we did it on trampoline. It was a little, uh, little reckless, you know. Back when that was uh, nineteen was when I joined up with them, and and twenty, and then we just kind of hit that point where we were like, why can't we do this like in a ring? Why can't we learn how to do this? And so we showed up at uh, American Championship Ooh. Wrestling in. Uh, December of 2001 and we did we did the the thing that now you look back on and you go what what goobers what idiots we we came in full gimmick with signs and all kinds of stuff just to heckle all the other bad guys mainly because we were better than most of the bad guys that that they were presenting to us and uh so we showed up, but we showed up early and we were like, what does it take to get in the ring? And so uh, we, 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 they said, you got to have a license in Virginia. So get your license, come back and we'll teach you. And they used us. We probably shouldn't have been used. That was the next time, April 27, 2002. So when I debuted and uh, I mean, I was actually managing uh, so my first match wasn't until uh, about a month or two later, but um, it wasn't it wasn't till a while later that we had met up with Boogie and got some formal training. I know that you're going to ask about that, so I'll uh, I won't go too far into that. Now, out of curiosity, what was your first gimmick name? Donnie Dollars. Okay, all right, you've been pretty consistent with a, the whole way then. With yeah, with a dollar sign instead of you know just an S, you know, just right. spice it up a little. All right. Donnie, uh, Donnie Dollars. I like that. Rolls off the tongue. Exactly. Exactly. It does. Well, you you mentioned it when you were talking about the store. Uh, you mentioned BWC, Boogie's Wrestling Camp. Uh, Dan and Benny in the ring here. We have, and obviously you, 
you know, the Don J bits on we have a, a we have that in common, the common bond boogies wrestling camp. Benny mm-hmm. may or may not know their their commissioner. I, I don't know, maybe Benny. What's that? Um, oh yeah, I'm I'm pretty well acquainted with him. Yeah. Yeah, you, you you might know that guy. I it's hear he's pretty good. That's a great guy. I've shook look. his hand before. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. You you graduated 2004. Uh, Correct. Benny always loves to joke that the BWC, you know, scenic Shawsville, Virginia. You you go out, drive out to the middle of nowhere, and you're still about 30 minutes away. How did you get ready end to up? not have service for four hours? <laughs> Right, you're better off getting dropped in from a helicopter. <laughs> yes. How how did you end up in Shawsville? How did you end up at the BWC? Okay, so this is a good story. So there was this guy named Rob Ruthenberg who hosted a radio show. Uh, I think it was on Z101 when they still did like alternative rock and stuff. And he had this thing where he called it Ruthie Mania. And it was mud wrestling, you know, just these like kiddie pools filled with water. And uh, that time it wasn't potting soil because there were little rocks in it. I'll tell you that it was not cool, (laughs) but it was uh, when WWE came to town for a house show. And if you, uh, you know, they had like a little tournament and if you won, you got uh, backstage passes. Well, me and Versetti show up in character and I'm his entrant because, you know, I'm six foot four, 300 pounds. So I'm his entrant into it. I'm going in to win the tickets for him and all this. And uh, Boogie was the judge of the competition. And uh, so because Versetti wasn't involved when we were on breaks and stuff, uh, Jimmy was like, brother, you, you guys – got the gimmick you got the the touch you got the feel for it like i see that you've been doing some stuff already i can just tell that you've been involved somehow and that's when he invited us to come up and uh be a part of the graduating class of 2004 and then the rest is history absolutely so besides jimmy obviously jimmy had a a huge influence on your style your rendering style um were there any other wrestlers that you saw back in the, you know, the mid late nineties that, that influenced you as well? Uh, well, I, I like test a lot. Uh, his, uh, my big boot is modeled after test. Uh, he had a, like a pump handle slam too. Did, yes. I, I've, mm-hmm. I, I've got a pump handle move in there. Um, Test was just very intense. Uh, he, uh, he may have been unpolished, but I really, uh, really liked him. Uh, obviously, the Million Dollar Man, uh, just the, the, you know, cockiness and and the I'm richer than you, uh, you know, all that. Uh, I could buy and sell you twice over, kind of thing. Um, I mean, and it was just a mix of everybody from those Monday Night Wars and mainly when uh, WWE started to emerge from them. And, and, you know, you had The Rock, you had Stone Cold, you had Kurt Angle, you had all these people that were so great on the mic and in the ring. And I mean, it's just like like you like you tell anybody who's learning, take a little bit from every everybody and make it yours. That's the best way. Yeah, that's great advice. And. You know, other than the, I think the pump handle slam, which he was really one of the first ones I remember seeing doing it regularly. Very, very underrated entrance music as far as during an era when everybody had banger entrance music. I love right. his his test. It was it was, music. it was a low key banger. It was like yeah, you know, you put him up against any of the other uh, mid carders, and it's like no, 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 no I got to go with test here. He was actually one of my favorites, and I, I thought, like, over time, he greatly improved. And I oh, mean, yes. I, I, what was he, like, 33, 34 when he died? But I think yeah. I think eventually he would have became a world champion if he, you know, if he had continued. Yeah. He had that look. I, I thought he was, he was on that path for sure. In the ring. Okay, cause that was kind of where they were kind of where they were going towards the end of his of his life was he was the they, they were building him up as the big monster heel in uh, what they called WWECW, like the was I think it was the Sci-Fi Channel at the time. Yeah, and 
you know, he was he was the kind of the big monster heel at the end there. But yeah, he definitely had it. I, I liked him, and I, I thought his uh, his run with I mean both the corporation and the little anti corporate alliance at the end there with your you know, big shows and Ken Shamrock and all. I, I thought he 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 did a lot as far as main the, event or the primary corpora- the upper corporation. Corporate, sorry to cut you off, but the, no, you mentioned good. it. The, cor- the corporation is my favorite all-time stable. I loved the corporation, everything about it. Just Big Show being a part of it, and just uh, everything about the corporation was. It just we only care about money and championships, and I was like, and being in control, and I was like, yes, it's yeah. all about. Well, and not not to mention if they hadn't have done the the heel the real heel rock you know people's champ kind of corporate rock mm-hmm, you would never rock. have had some of the huge moments that came later oh no hell no but i, I want you to kind of explain you said something you, you talked about you said 21 years so i mean you're mm-hmm. you're in now your third decade you're you're into your third decade of wrestling uh, i'm sure i mean our listeners would love Maybe to sound hear. sound old <laughs> I'd love to hear you. Started you started young, though. So just... Yeah. Well, I mean, you, you know, it's funny you say, you think about your third decade. We we were just talking about Jimmy Valiant. He's wrestled, oh, yeah. uh, what, seven different decades seven? of yeah. wrestling matches yeah. in? Yeah, he's, he's going for yeah. eight, too. Yeah, going for eight. That man. That's... Anyway, sorry to cut you off. What was no, your no, question? I, I'm sorry. I always got room to talk about Jimmy. If, I, if I'm in... One percent as good a shape as he is when I'm half his age, I would consider myself lucky. Bro, you telling me? But uh, like I said, so where was I? Yeah, the, the you're going on to your your third decade. Um, I, I'm sure your listeners would love to hear the journey. Uh, your tr- you know, kind of your travels. I was really hoping you have any really good road stories you'd love to share with us. Uh, I've got plenty that I'm sure. I I don't know if I can remember. Uh, I have well, let me ones. let me rephrase that. Do you have yeah. any you have any road stories that are not going to get us uh, investigated by the feds? Maybe like oh oh, uh, I do have one story that I was just uh, put on about. Uh, I mean, it's probably been too long now, but I didn't find out about it till like ten fifteen years later. Um, so I was at uh, CWF Mid Atlantic. And back in the the mid 2000s, after the show, we all go out and hang out, go to a bar, you know, just like wrestlers do, you know, just the, the thing to do. And um, we go to this one club and there was one guy, his name was Cornelius J. Lumpkin. Money, money gimmick, same same kind of thing. He got his face put on some. I assume realistic looking dollar bills, a hundred dollar bills. And he comes out there, he does one night where he lights a cigar with the, with the money and all that, you know, and we go after the show, we go to a club and they, uh, unbeknownst to me, hand me one of these counterfeit bills and send me up to get drinks. And they're all like, uh, he's, I'm like, all right, what do you want? What do you want? And I get a drink order from everybody and they're like, ah, they're going to, you know, whatever. So I go up and, and no, no clue. And it's so dark in this place. And I'm just like this, 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 I hand them the, uh, the bill. They give me change. I walk back with the drinks. They all look at me and go, we better drink these and get out of here. <laughs> Because I had just passed off a counterfeit hundred dollar bill and I didn't even know it. Oh no! Yeah, uh, that's a Mr. Fiji man. Then. Right. It, it, I was like, and and they when when they finally told me about ten fifteen years later, whatever, they're like, you didn't know. And I was like, I had no clue. I was just doing what you know. I was like paying my dues, going and getting the drinks for the boys, you know. Probably still a wanted poster, right? At that bar, uh, probably. I hope they didn't get a good look. Be- Be- Benny, when we're when we're done recording tonight, make sure we share Don's uh, contact information with the Dark Side of the Ring guys because they're that's gonna... right. Yeah, that's a good episode for sure. They, they're looking for me. Yeah, 
uh, I mean, that that one's good. Uh, I, I, I have a story that just, and it's just like a personal story for me. Um, I had a match with, uh, I tagged with the Barbarian and with the Steiner brothers, oh, wow. uh, against the Steiner brothers. And uh, it's, yeah, I'll, I can send you guys links and stuff so uh, you can share those as well. But um, in the match, uh, in this probably, we could skip this part later or, or this part of that part later. Uh, the uh, At the end of the match, I lose, tap out of the Steiner recliner, you know, typical, you know, indie guy coming up stuff. And uh, they, had decided that Barb was going to turn on me to get him back over so he could sell gimmicks and stuff at the end of the night. They didn't let me in on this information. And <laughs> oh, oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> so I roll out of the ring, like what, what's the matter? Why, why? And he's like stomping around. Oh, I'm so upset. He's got a chair in his hand and me being the idiot that I am. I'm just like, that's weird. And he goes, what's that? And I'm standing next to him and I go, what? And just turn my head and I look back at him. I go, what? He goes, what's that? And I look again. And if I had known, I would have, you know, given him more. And I'm like, what? And then he just whacks me with a chair a couple of times. Uh, Rick Steiner, Barb leaves. Rick Steiner comes down and uh, he goes, he goes, oh, no, no, I'm going to help him. Goes, uh, goes to pick me up, kind of dusts my shoulder off, grabs a chair, throws it at my face. Like, and so, you know, the, they're just getting over, you know, beating the, beating up on the, the heel, guy. The, the guy, the jerk, the next week. So now I was on like seven shows in a row with, uh, Ric Flair and Dusty Rhodes. The next, the, not the next week, but the next time we had a show, Flair was on one of those shows and I'm like, uh, passing through the locker room. It was a shared locker room, but. These guys are all telling Ric Flair the story of what the Steiners did to me and Barb did the, the last time. And I'm just like telling Ric Flair a story about me. Like, what? <laughs> what is this the real life? Like, I couldn't, I, I just couldn't fathom it. You know, that, that kind of leads to the next question that, you know, I'm sure that you face some wrestling legends. Now, you mentioned a whole bunch of them. I did see, I thought on your on your page that I believe you wrestled Bobby Eaton in 2009. Correct. What was, what was that like? That was, uh, I learned more in a, from one match to the next, because right after I worked him the first time, I worked him again, uh, you know, a month or whatever it was between shows. And I learned more from just those two matches with him than I had learned. And up to, uh, it was probably 2009, that was seven years at that point. So, because Bobby had uh, recently, I'm not sure how, it, it, long enough to allow him to be physically able to get in the ring and stuff, but he had had a heart attack. Oh. Okay. And so I was working with him relatively fresh after a heart attack, and I learned so much from going because I was just the big monster and I would just destroy them, throw people down. You know, they all bumped for me, but Bobby couldn't bump for me. And I had to learn to work around that. And then that's when working really clicked. Um, and and working, working with Bobby was amazing. And not with because of anything he did, just because of, I mean, I actually hit one. I, I would always my little uh, move for people to for the baby face to to start mounting his comeback is missing the leg rope off the second rope. But Bobby goes, oh, go ahead and hit that, brother. I said, Bobby, number one, that's your finishing move. Number two, I've never actually hit it on someone before. I always miss. No, brother, go ahead. I, I, I'll, I'll sell it for you. All right, Bobby. I hit it. <sighs> To this day, my tailbone hurts. Still hurts. If I sit too long in one position, my tailbone aches. And I'm like, Bobby Eaton, I told you I didn't want to do that. <laughs> Did he sell it well, though? I'm like, it was Bobby Eaton. Come on now. Um, yeah, dumb question. Sorry about that. 
<laughs> yeah, I was going to say, uh, but I didn't want to insult my host, but no, like working with Bobby was amazing. Can I, can I go back real quick to one road Absolutely. story? Oh, it. sure. Yeah. Um, so I've been able to go to, I don't know, and it's not because I've been booked there or anything else, but I've kind of made it a tradition to go to WrestleManias and I've been to, uh, not the the COVID one, and then not the one that was in Tampa after COVID when tickets were sky high. But I've been to like seven out of the past ten WrestleManias, okay. and uh, the one the first one in New York, I went up and I was helping High Spots out. High Spots is a great place to go for wrestling merchandise, wrestling gear, all that kind of stuff. Uh, and I was helping them out because they run WrestleCon at WrestleMania every year, and they need people to watch tables, take tickets, all that kind of stuff uh, for different. And I, they said, did you want to get uh, Bobby Heenan? And I was like, oh, I'd love to love to hang out with Bobby Heenan. Now, he was very sick at the time. Uh, couldn't talk much. Had had the the with the chin was, you know, he was very he didn't look well, but he was well spirited. And uh, he had his book. And then he had like an eight by 10 that the the sale went, would go to high spots, but the book sales went directly to him. And knowing that I was like, well, I'd rather, if I'm going to pay for something, I'd rather have him get the money because sure. he's desperately in need of the medical care, you know, and all that instead of giving it to high spots, no offense. I, I like high spots, but I've given them a lot of money for my gear. <laughs> so uh, there's nobody in line. And his wife is next to him, got his pile of books. And uh, I look around, I see nobody in his line. He's just kind of looking around the convention. And so I hand her the 10 bucks for the book. Uh, she goes, okay. Hands the book, slides it over to him. He looks down at the book, looks at her. She looks at him and points at me, holds up the money. He looks back at her. He goes, Give him the money back. He didn't say it, but he pointed the money back at me, signed the book for free, gave it to me. And I was just like, wow, I still got That's it. Awesome. It's right Damn. it's right up here. That's a rich story. That's, my, That's yeah. yeah, that's great. And, you know, even if you can't make it to WrestleMania itself, WrestleCon, and there are so many, there is such a, a boom uh, of indie and and wrestling events like that that pop up because of rest, WrestleMania becomes Rest- almost like a a whole week weekend long event. Absolutely, and- but if you can't get to the, one of those, there's always Wrestlecade, which is in uh, Black Friday weekend every year in Winston Salem, and I'm I'm down there almost every year. Uh, the, a lot of my great road stories come from there, giving airport rides to Jerry Lawler and uh, you know. Uh, barbarian and warlord and just all kinds of people jerry lawler telling stories about when uh when they first found kamala and and for first getting him going i mean so wrestle how, how, how if you can't get to you, though as far as oh, geographically where have you wrestled uh i have wrestled in michigan boo <laughs> uh ohio indiana West Virginia, New York, North Carolina, South Carolina, Virginia, obviously, uh, Georgia. I think that's it so far. Well, you know, you, you obviously you just mentioned, you know, uh, Winston Salem. You you mm-hmm. were telling your story. You talked about the CWF. Uh, you know, obviously you got a lot of ties down to Carolina. CWF's yep. a great great fed. Uh, we always love on the story. We talk about the, the infamous hot dog and a handshake, you know, uh, you've wrestled for many promoters, many promotions. You just listed a, a plethora of States. Do you have a favorite promotion, a favorite territory as it were? And if you don't mind flipping the script a little bit, do you have any horror stories or people that, that you would like, Hey, be careful with this guy. Cause I got my, my handshake. I got paid in, in subway coupons, whatever it may be. <laughs> um, well, my favorite territory overall is North Carolina. North Carolina is just 
the best place for for wrestling. You got currently you got AML, you got Firestar, you got uh, it used to be Steve Carino's uh, promotion on on the East Coast. Just all kinds of good stuff throughout North Carolina. My favorite promotion, obviously, was CWF Mid Atlantic. I had a home there for fifteen years. Um, I mean, every show, every show, it was it, it was a lifestyle for me. Was going to North Carolina every two weeks to hit up CWF. Um, but uh, as far as uh, the hot dog and the handshake. There was one time I went up to, I was working with a, a promoter and I was like his right hand guy and he was going to do, um, some kind of like mixed promotion, inner promotion kind of thing, have me wrestle his champion and put him over whatever. And it was in West Virginia, which isn't far from where I'm at, but it was way up North. It was about three hours up the northern side of of West Virginia, and so we I made a weekend out of it, drove up and all this, and the promoter just for whatever reason said, "Well, I, I we're not going to do that anymore," and I completely lost out on a tire. And I was like, I couldn't I couldn't fathom it that that you were getting bringing somebody in. They were going to work for free. They were going to make your guy look good, and then because of your issue with whatever is going to hold us back. We can't just talk about that later when I've already made the plans. I've already made the trip. Right. That's great. You, yeah. you know, it, it's, it's funny because I, I mean, we, we joke about it. I mean, I actually do pay Benny and hot dogs for, to do the show with me. And he seems like, hot dogs. It, so I mean, uh, are they uh ballpark? Well, I I used to I used to pay him in Jets tickets. They plump it turns out they're them? actually worth less than a pack of hot dogs. Uh, yeah, I tried to yeah. sell those Jets tickets. I couldn't even afford to eat ramen noodles. <laughs> I, I wanted to I wanted to pay him in Yankees tickets last year, but you know I don't want those anymore. So, <laughs> Don, for the most part, you seem to wrestle heel, and uh, you know every uh, the overwhelming majority of the wrestlers we we've spoken with say that they prefer to wrestle heel, which to me is a bit counterintuitive. But what is yeah. your preference and, and why? Uh, if I have a preference, it's heel, and that's because I think I'm better at it, in my opinion. Uh, is, it easy, can, is, it easy, is it easier? Or? Kinda, because you, you kind of think sometimes with a heel, you got to take some of that, you know, real life angst and give it back to the, you know, to make net to make the the crowd feel you know the way you want to make them feel you got to make them feel bad and you know we're we're all human bad stuff happens to us you know all the time and so you got to kind of take that and focus it and uh for for me it's easy to to just because it's my you know release my when i when i get to get out there and let let go of some tension stuff like that um I, i'm comfortable doing either um, but I, I find that the gimmick kind of, it you know, itself, kind right? of wedges me into to a certain kind of aspect, which I can't, it's not that I can't overcome, but it's a little harder, a little more difficult. There's some costume changes, some, you know, that kind of stuff. And you got to give it a purpose because otherwise I'm just meant to come in and be a, be a million dollar man type, you know? What would you say percentage wise in your career you wrestle heel? Ninety percent? No, no. Uh I'd say probably seventy, sixty five. Okay. There was uh, a time at, at CWF where I was part of a, a group called Fatback Enterprises, and it was built around me and, uh, well, originally Michael Yamaha, but then he moved on and it became me and Corey Edsel. Uh, Corey's one of the best undiscovered talents. He got a, a tryout for WWE and everything. Uh, but we were we were just, you know, very NWO-ish, doing whatever we wanted, and didn't really try to make the fans boo us, but we did whatever we wanted. We'd give low blows, we'd cheat, we'd do stuff. And if they cheer for us, whatever, we didn't go out of our way to be like, no, don't cheer us. 
you know, and so the group started turning babyface, and they, I was the straight man, no matter what, I was always the guy that never broke, was always business, and they came to me, and they were like, well, we're getting a lot of, a lot of the, you know, the babyface pop, so let's, we're, we're thinking we're going to go babyface, are you okay with that, and I was like, I guess, like I was so unsure of it because it I had done it one time before in my career and it got easier. But then what that allowed me to do was actually see both sides of what we do. And from there, I was able to make my heel side better because I knew what a baby face needed to do on the opposite side, you know, and then I was able to make other baby faces better and being like, this is what you should do. Quick follow up, you know, and, and I love the, uh, I love that the story there where, you know, you just kind of started as the heels and then just became so cool that you transitioned kind of like both, both we, we were talking about when you got into wrestling, how, you know, Austin 316 and the NWO both started as heels and just were so mm-hmm. cool that they became the beloved characters right. that everybody got behind. But um, a quick follow-up, you talked about how you felt it was easier. Earlier in the interview, you mentioned modifying a lot of your style after Test, and then you obviously, Jimmy Valiant, and you know, several of the people you said you modified your style after were heels for a good chunk of their career, too. When you wrestle as a face, do you have to change your style up? The, the, the big boot and some of those moves may not transition as well as the face character. <laughs> Not really. Um, I've found that my moves are like powerhouse moves. Uh, I do just, I do the big boot, which a lot of people have said, you know, it's one of the best they've seen. Uh, I, I, I still am like, uh, I need to work on it, but, um, there's a, a move where it starts off with a Rikishi driver and I fling him out into an X factor. So they start on my shoulder and they they fling out face first and then the pump handle, like I said, with a, a sit out power bomb. So they're not really, you know, it, it's, a, it's not really a style where I have to change up my move set or anything like that. It's just in, in my opinion, it's just how I play to the crowd, whether I, I want them to cheer me or not, you know, depends on my mood, I guess. Well, speaking of characters, you your transition into the you know Donald J. Bitton. Where did that moniker come from? What's the story behind that? Okay, this is a good story. Um, I was what what we call plateauing, where I had kind of just hit a spot where I was good. Uh, I was, but I wasn't anything special. I just existed. And I didn't really have a calling or a purpose, you know. So this was right when when cryptocurrency really started uh, to like become a, a a more household thing, you know. The, if you were into it, then you were into it way back. But um, right when it started coming to the forefront, and I was like, well, that's the future of money, and like, why can't I now? We were. Uh, I had the the privilege of being around Shane Helms, who's a fantastic mind for the business. Like, he's so good. But my idea was this. This was my idea in my head. And I was like, well, that I can make that my new shirt, my new logo, my new whatever. <clears throat> Shane turned to me and said, why don't you just make that your gimmick? And I said, how do you mean? So I said, go for it, go all in, like make it a thing, make it a thing people can invest in and you know, whatever. And I was, I I stopped and I thought, and I was like, holy shit, this is, this could be a a gold mine. Yeah, literally gold, you know, but uh, you know, it was from there. And then uh, a conversation that I actually had with Christian, uh, at uh WrestleCade giving him an airport ride and he told me you know I said what is you, you went from being very successful tag team wrestler to being very successful 
singles wrestler. And that doesn't happen for everybody. That doesn't, ha- I said, how did you transition that way? How, what made it work for you? And he said, let it be organic. If it's not organic, they're not going to buy it. You're not going to buy it. So I, I just, with that coaching from Shane and the, the advice from Christian, it just all kind of, when I had the idea and Shane said, go all in, like, man, that was the, the fire I, I needed and the inspiration I needed to really like take that next step in my progression of my character, my persona. Nice. So, Don, if it's not too intrusive, I, I think our listeners would like to hear your your comeback story. Um, earlier this year, you suffered a very severe health setback, putting your career on hold. How are you doing with that? I am doing great with that. I had a lacunar infarct. I don't think you have to edit that. Stroke. <laughs> it is... Uh, not a good stroke i mean no stroke is a good stroke but they say if if there's one to have that is the kind because there's like uh, an incredible recovery rate uh, associated with it um and it, the day before the super bowl i got checked into the hospital and had an MRI and they diagnosed me and said yeah you had a stroke and then it was like as soon as they said the word stroke the whole right side uh, just kind of was like, oh, I can't use it anymore. Uh, I was in the hospital for over a month. At the time, I was the pure pro wrestling. They're pretty much out of uh, Danville and, uh, you know, this this uh, Roanoke and South area. They're actually going to be in Roanoke. Um, and... I was the Southeastern heavyweight champion at the time. And I had to actually, they, they did the, the privilege of not, not requesting it back for me until I got out of the hospital. But, uh, you know, I, I surrendered the belt and all that stuff and having all that taken away and not through any really fault of, of my own. I mean, obviously, you know, you got to work on diet and exercise and all that stuff, but, I, you know, I'm, I was active seven days a week. I was wrestling three days a week, you know, just working all the time. And, and you just never know, you know, especially if it's, I think it might be, have a little to do with genetics, but, um, you know, it's no joke. And, uh, I got really good care. Um, eventually (laughs) that's a story for another time, but I got really good care and uh i was out of work for six months and uh i just recently returned um it's been a lot of adjusting and uh because i've got to relearn you know everything that i've known for 40 years i've got to relearn it with this side uh it has put wrestling on hold for a while obviously because there's things that i just simply can't do right now i don't want to say anymore because uh i gotta come i gotta come back brewing you know i got i got uh i got at least one more match left in me and uh i I hope a whole nother run i want to be i want to be a heavyweight champion before i retire and uh yeah it's uh it's been a journey uh tell everybody just maintain your stuff check your stuff if you have to look into, you know, genetic factors, do that, do what you got to do, but look out for yourself. Cause you never know when something like this could happen. Sure. Uh, it just, this has popped up out of nowhere. I, I was about to make a, an appearance and, and I can't text the, the promoter. I, I can't make it tonight. I've had a stroke. What? <laughs> yeah. Wow. Well, it's, you know, certainly, uh, I mean, it's crazy to think, you know, all the little things, you know, because we've had some some guests in the past with various health issues and similar stories. And they say it's it's always the little things that you don't think about, like which hand you reach for something for, you know, oh, the phone rang. Oh, shoot. Let me I got to you know, I got to learn to pick right. it up with my right. It, it, it's always the little things that you miss. And it's great to hear that you're you're on the path to a comeback because I, I look forward to that. 
Absolutely. Yeah, just uh, just took my first bump uh, two weeks ago. Uh, my my first my first post stroke bump, if you will. Uh, so and it, and it felt good. So I'm I'm excited. I just gotta keep working at it. Well, that is definitely good to hear. Well, it, not to uh, not to to imply anything, but you said you were in the hospital for a month. You you were laid up, you know, for for a stretch of time a lot of time to kind of catch up and watch TV and, and things like that. You, you talked a lot about how big of a fan you were when you got into wrestling. Do you follow the current product at all? Do you watch current wrestling? And if so, what, what is your thoughts on it? Um, I don't. And that, that's pretty much my thoughts on it. I don't watch a whole lot of it. I'll watch the big pay-per-views. I'll watch the rumble. I'll, I, I typically go to mania, um, and I'll catch up on the storylines. Um, and I can't really tell you why. It's not that I'm turned off by the product, but I, I will tell you that it certainly hasn't had the power to captivate me like it used to. And I, whether that's me being a jaded, you know, 20 year veteran, or whether that's me just unimpressed with the product, which I I, I know a lot of a lot of wrestling fans kind of are, and that's that's why they're loving this uh, AEW WWE competition because they're they're as that feeling of you know those Monday Night Wars are kind of kind of back a little bit. <clears throat> but um, I I don't I don't dislike the current product. Now, one of my best friends is uh, is Cameron Grimes. He's you know on SmackDown now. He's you know. I try to watch everything he does and, uh, you know, and, and I try to watch, you know, the main storylines, the main players, see what, see what the guy, I try to keep up to date, but I don't necessarily consume the product. Well, Don, kind of a follow-up to that. Uh, you guys are the business in 2002. So in that 21 year period, how has wrestling evolved? Uh, it's become a evolve? lot. <laughs> uh it's become a lot more athletic almost in my opinion to its detriment uh because people are so athletic that they're doing things that in my opinion aren't wrestling but like i teach if i'm teaching i'm just going to give you my opinion my opinion of wrestling everybody else has a different opinion of wrestling there's no 100% right way, 100% wrong way to do things. Maybe one or two, you know what I'm saying? There's a few things that are just strictly by the book, but, um, and I got off track there. <laughs> oh, how has it evolved? Uh, the, it's a lot more athletic. Um, in my opinion, it's it's a little less real than it used to be. There's not that, uh, you know, social media has almost, you know, been a detriment to it where you can get the dirt sheets and see, you know, the, the, the good guy and the bad guy going to Burger King or whatever, you know, that kind of stuff that you used to not see back in, you know, the golden, the, the heyday of wrestling when everybody still believed. You know, all, all I had was magazines and that, that, you know, I mean, kayfabe was so strictly adhered to. And now it seems like that is so far in the past. Right. You, you, you only know what you're told and that's what you were told was the yeah. stuff in the magazines. So, and then what you saw on TV. And, and we believe that all. And to give you an idea, I mean, how powerful kayfabe is, you know, Betty and I've been doing the show for coming up on three years now and we've had numerous times we've gone to ask someone a question, you know, tell me about this, this, and this. And they've had to be like, uh, it's actually funny story. That never happened. That was a magazine kayfabe bit that just, <laughs> you know, we've, we've kept with for 40 years. We've That's been telling them amazing. the same lie, but let me tell you amazing. how it actually went down. You know, I love that. And, and it's, I mean, one of my favorite off topic for a second, one of my favorite, I had the, uh, the pleasure of interviewing Duke Drosy who uh, Duke the dumpster, he had um, lost his foot in a medical 
it, uh, right. had a medical issue, lost his foot, got his prosthetic and got back into wrestling and was and was just getting ready for a, a or just come back, excuse me, from wrestling in Europe and was doing some indie promotions. This was a few years ago. And I, I, was, I mentioned the bit about the magazines when when um, they listed the top the 500 hot wrestlers. Uh, he was number 500. This was 94. And right. of course, the, he was he was a, a local talent in Florida and the crowd was, you know, 500, 500. That was the chant. And I, we were talking about it. And he's like, you know, it's actually funny. He's sick. Like, that whole thing, the the me being ranked 500, the crowd chanting for all all fabrication like he was ranked 500. But everybody, even even subscribers to the magazine, stop reading it. 25 nobody knew even people who had the magazine right. still didn't know who he right. was he's yeah, like, you went down to 500 you had like, life. oh my god 500 signed my magazine it was entirely time, then. yeah absolutely the whole thing the whole story was was kayfabe to make him seem like a bigger deal than he was when he signed with wwf and here we are 30 years later and i still thought that was a true story because i'd read it a dozen times in different wrestling magazines. Well, one of uh, one of the indie wrestlers I know, uh, I, I I might get it wrong. I think it's Timothy Bumpers. He, uh, I think he was Mister Five Hundred. I can't remember. It's him or uh, Darius Garland or uh, yeah, it was somebody. It was uh, somebody in Carolinas was like I'm, you know, the five hundredth best wrestler in the world, and that's they that was. Uh, I was like, yeah, go run with it. If they, if they give it to you, go. <laughs> well, you know, as we get uh, you know, approaching the end here, as we get ready to wrap up, you've talked a lot about, one, you're, you're starting a business, you're training. You, you mentioned the backyard bit. Um, what, if for our listeners out there, if you or our, our YouTube viewers as well, if you're – what is advice do you have for an aspiring wrestler, someone who wants to get into the business today, wants to, they're contemplating a career in wrestling. What advice do you have for them? Um, you got to want it. You got to love it. Uh, none of it is easy. None of it is, is going to be handed to you. you. You can only get so far on talent alone. You've got to actually pay your dues. You got to, promote your shows you got to help set up you got to help do anything be invaluable to anybody you, uh, you, i don't need you to wrestle tonight. i need somebody to run concessions okay i got you uh hey can you grab a camera tonight i got you uh can you do commentary i got you if you can be if you can be universal and do anything uh in my opinion hard work will get you farther than the talent ever will uh and, and for the young guys Keep your mouth closed and your ears open, but that doesn't mean don't ask questions because you never learn if you don't ask questions. You know, Don, you're, uh, you're bringing back a quick flashback. So um, when I was in Virginia, uh, I was going to camp probably like two or three times a month, and I, would, I wanted to get a good parking spot. I didn't want to get stuck. There isn't a whole lot of parking at BWC. Yeah. So I usually get there about – uh, between 10 and 10 30 even though camp didn't open until noon but i was amazed at how many of the students were there and you know yeah some of them were in the ring uh working on their stuff but there was a bunch of them that were just out sweeping you know sweeping the the sidewalks and picking up trash and, and that, mm-hmm. when you said that as far as you know what, what you need to do i mean i'm, I'm hearing the word humility and and that's you know, you, you don't want to think you're really more than you really are. You want to be, you know, at first you want to be a part of something. And I, I think from there, uh, you know, that that's how you prove yourself. Well, I think also that that comes from the, the family aspect of boogies. You know, once you're once you're up there, you're you're boogies, BWC family for life, you know. So it's like that sense of, well, I don't want this to be. You know, I, I want this to be as good as it can be for everybody else. Kind of like prompts everybody else to to lift a hand and 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 get involved and be I, proud never, of what they're. I've presenting. never seen anyone like remotely act like anything like that was beneath them. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we we were talking before before the show, you know, about the the some of the big, I mean, biggest names in wrestling that show up for various events and they're the first ones there in the morning setting up chairs 
bagging, bagging popcorn, whatever needs to happen. Yep. Everybody has a, has a, there's, there's always something to do to put on a wrestling show. No, don't. And another thing for the young guys, thank everybody. That's a part of the show. The, the announcer, the ring crew, the, the, you know, the people that grab your gear and bring it to the back. Thank everybody that, that has something to do with the show, because if that, what they weren't there, then that wouldn't have happened. That, that's, that's great advice. Very true. Well, Don, as, as we wrap up, um, you know, again, thank you for your time. This has been great. Uh, I'm glad you had a lot of fun. Know, I appreciate you, you open it up. You know, I know we were, weren't sure how, how some of the questions would be received, but, uh, you, you talked about you, you're, you're in the, in the works. You just took your first bump, you said. Um, so that'll be the final question to you. Well, what does the future hold? Uh, any spoilers out there for, for Donald J. Bitton, uh, future appearances, long-term plans, anything like that? Well, what, what's in the cards here? Uh, actually there is a, my first appearance since April of this year is going to be this Saturday, uh, the 21st at the countryside sportsplex in Roanoke. So right down the road for me, um, that's, that's the first thing it's so close, you know, I'm kind of limited on, on travel right now. Uh, but that's the first step I want to, you know. I miss it so much, you know, I, maybe I can, I can manage somebody. I can do commentary. I, maybe I can just get on the mic and tell everybody how I'm doing, but, uh, that's going to be my first, uh, scheduled appearance since, uh, April. Uh, nothing, nothing is, uh, on my schedule right now. Uh, since I was told by the doctors six to 18 months is, is the biggest is the window for the biggest improvement. I'm looking at, at into next year before I resume. Uh, but I will say, keep your eyes peeled for someone who looks a little bit like me somewhere out there on the Indies. I'm not going to give it away. The insiders know if you know, you know, and if you don't better ask somebody, but uh, I will be out there. I'm still uh, involved. I still teach at Star City Pro uh, every Saturday, 10 to 2. Um, if you're interested, this is kind of in conjunction with Boogies because uh, Boogies runs on Sunday. We're there Saturday mornings so that you can get in some work. We're not taking away from Boogies. You can you can come get some more advanced work uh, than you might get at Boogies, uh, more theory and more um, more why, not just what. Um, so I'm still doing that. I'm still passionate about teaching and making wrestling better for, uh, leaving it better than when I found it. And, uh, the appearance, I I will keep you guys in the loop next time. Uh, I'm, I'm getting ready to have my first match back, which like I said, won't be till next year at the very earliest, but, uh, I'm going to be involved. Don't I'm, I'm going to be out there on the Indies. I'm going to be doing something. I'm going to be getting my hand in the cookie jar a little bit every now and then. So I, I see some gold in your future other than that on your shirt. Well, you know, me too. Well, when I take it off, <laughs> <laughs> you, uh, you, you, you said you got a long history of, uh, enjoying WrestleMania weekend. You're going to be near Philadelphia next in April. I'm trying. I'm waiting for these price drops uh, or uh, to come down. Like people in January saying, "I need to pay my Christmas bill," and they're gonna, uh, you know, they're gonna put their tickets up to to pay off their Christmas debts. Um, Are you you don't I, you don't want to pay the eleven thousand dollars for a floor side weekend pass? That the most ridiculous thing I've ever like. I I would rather buy a car with that. I'd rather put a down payment on a house with that. Are you kidding me? <sighs> and people wonder how I became such a smart investor. <laughs> well, yeah. Uh, smart. Benny, final final thoughts to you. No, I'm just glad to see Don. I'm, I'm glad to see that he is doing okay. Really great guy. A, a credit to the wrestling industry, and we we will see a comeback for sure. Yeah, uh, I'm working on uh, working on kind of like an episodic uh, little documentation of my 
comeback. Uh, I'm not sure how we're going to do it. It's just I given the idea to my producer type friend and he's uh, assembling interviews and footage and different things for me. Uh, so be on the lookout for, you know, updates on the on the journey back. Uh, I will say if you want to if you want to support me, you can go to uh, uh, what is it? Pro wrestling dot com slash invest in bit Don. This is just one of my shirts. There's another one on there and then another one, I believe, coming very soon. Um, and yeah, keep your eyes peeled. Oh, collar and elbow brand collar and elbow brand dot com. Use the code dollars, all capitals. You save 10% on your poll purchase. Uh, and that's uh, that's about all I got to shill tonight, I think. There you go. And you're very active for, for our listeners and, and fans out there. You're you're active on social media. I know uh, Donald J. Bitton has a Facebook page. You've got a lot of uh, clip matches on YouTube. You actually mentioned your training at Star City. If you were to look up Don J. B- Donald J. Bitton on YouTube, the very first video that comes up is your match with the Star City kid from about a year oh. and change ago. Wow. Um, okay. Which, is, which, if you you talked about how pretty your big boot is, that match is a great example of it. Yeah. He, Glad you, you noticed. You turned, you turned him inside out with that one. So great stuff. And like you said, Donald J. Bitton, Pro Wrestling uh, Collar and Elbow as well uh, for Donald J. Bitton and the Path Back. As you said, invest in yourself for the That's Long right. Island Ice B himself, Benny Scala. I'm Dan Spasha. Have a good night, everyone, and we will see you next time we're in the ring. Thanks, guys.